Welcome to our first lesson of um, organic chemistry. Organic chemistry means the study of life. Um, it is the chemistry of carbon compounds. So carbons form very strong bonds with other carbons. And they can form rings. They can form long chains of carbons. And it is the diversity of life that comes from these carbon compounds to form these strong bonds. It can also form um, covalent bonds with other elements as well. And because there's so many different ways that the carbons can join each other, you have a large number of organic molecules. Now, organic is um, of the organs. Okay, so you see the organ here. So this is the study of organs. And organs are made of carbon compounds. And there was a time when Scientists believed in vitalism. Vitalism. And vitalism means that there is a belief that the natural product need a vital force in order to create them. But this was disproved in 1828 by Frederick Wuhler. And he was a German scientist. And he was able to take ammonium cyanate and when he added heat he was able to make urea and this is urea and he knew it was urea because he was studying dog urine at the time this led scientists to understand that organic compounds can be synthesized Another thing, carbon dating. So um, if you look at the isotopes of carbon, the uh, most abundant isotope of carbon is carbon-12. Carbon-14 is an isotope of carbon. So this means they both have the same number of protons, which is 6, but they have a different number of neutrons. So... Um, and this is an isotope. You learn that from general chemistry. And so carbon-14 dating um, of anything that was living that has consumed um, carbon from sugar or carbon dioxide or excelled carbon dioxide um, can be used to date that paper, uh, anything clay, anything that's uh, made of carbon. Okay, so what are our learning objectives for today? Uh, we are going to have to learn how to draw the Lewis structures. That's going to be very important, okay? And we're going to work in our Pogel book, we're going to work the Pogel 1 activity together. And this is drawing organic structures. Um, it's very important to know how to draw organic structures. So we'll go and we'll learn the common, in order to do this, we'll learn common bonding patterns. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about electronegativity difference and formal charges. And that's what we'll focus on today. Okay, so if you go along in your book and also in your slides, you'll come to, um, just go ahead and go straight to page 43. Um, there's ionic bonding and covalent bonding. Okay, so this is a review. So ionic bonding is... Um, excuse me, like um, a delta positive, not a delta positive, full positive. 
So you have a full positive, a cation, and an anion. And this results when you have a metal with a nonmetal. So if you take sodium chloride, and you were to draw its structure, sodium has one valence electrons, chlorine has seven valence electrons. These are in group one of the periodic table, and chlorine is group seven. Um, you might want to have a periodic table out whenever you're doing your chemistry. So what happens is sodium will give up its one valence electron to chlorine, and then chlorine will take that valence electron and give a negative charge. This is ionic bonding. Whenever I see any of these metals, magnesium, sodium, calcium, I just go ahead and, and make it a positive charge, okay, and show the ionic bonding. That's going to be very important when you're trying to um, figure out the nucleophile in a reaction, and we'll study what a nucleophile is. Covalent bond, this would be like carbon. These are nonmetals with nonmetal. So if you have, um, let's say, propane, propane gas, you like to barbecue, right? This is uh, sharing hydrogen. You can look at hydrogen or hot fluorine. And so this line here represents two electrons, one, two. And it represents the sharing of electrons. So hydrogen is in group one and has one valence electron. And then the other hydrogen has one valence electron. And to make it a complete octet, they can both share their electrons. A complete octet for hydrogen is two electrons. Fluorine is group seven. And so it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The other fluorine has seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And it needs eight valence electrons. So it gets these two here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then it gets to pick up that other one. So there's eight valence electrons. And this fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons, okay? So the octet rule is followed. And so this is fluorine, and it's a covalent bond. Now, carbon, this is propane, and you might see propane like C3, H3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, that can be written like this. This you'll find is called the condensed formula. Okay, and so what happens is, let's just look at methane. Okay, carbon is in what group number? Four. So it has four valence electrons. Hydrogen is in group one and has one valence electron. So if you have carbon as your central atom with its four valence electrons, and then you have hydrogen with its one valence electron, hydrogen only needs two electrons to complete its octet. So each one of these hydrogens have two electrons. So hydrogen's happy. And then carbon has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight valence electrons. So it completes its octet. Now, that's covalent bonding. And let's go ahead and look at maybe some multiple bonding. So, um, okay, so if you have something like acetylene, Or just C2H3, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so here carbon's always going to be your central. And then you put hydrogen on the end. Okay, so hydrogen brings in one electron, one valence electron, because it's in group one. And then carbon has four, it's group four, and there's two of them. So that's eight valence electrons. Like I said, hydrogen has one, and there's four of them. So that's four. So eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. You have 12 total valence electrons. Hydrogen has, so now you put your electrons in. One, two, three, four. Hydrogen always has to be terminal. 
and then you put in your eight valence electrons. Four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so what do we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then eleven, twelve. So you can make multiple bonds. Carbon can do a double bond, and that's what this is. Or if you have C. 2H2, you can also have a triple bond. So the quickest way is um, you have your slides, and it's also on page 45 of your book. It's your common bonding patterns. Okay, and these are uncharged. And we'll talk about formal charges, but for now we'll just do the uncharged. Okay, so in your periodic table, if you look at group two, you have um, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, um, chlorine. And so group, or I meant row two, right? Row two. So row two, this is group three. Group four, five, six, seven. We don't worry about group eight, which are inert. Um, most of your compounds will be in row two. Okay, most of the elements that are in organic chemistry. So that's kind of nice. Now, okay, so what, what makes these happy? It means a complete octet. They're common bonding patterns. Okay, common bonding patterns. So when I say happy I mean no charges and you want to memorize this okay so boron likes three bonds so this is number of bonds and then let's do number of lone pairs okay and that means two electrons is in a lone pair so boron likes three bonds and likes zero lone pairs Carbon likes four bonds and zero lone pairs. Nitrogen likes three bonds and one lone pair. Oxygen likes two bonds and two lone pairs. Chlorine likes, or it could be fluorine, see? It could be any of those, but fluorine's the top one here. They put chlorine on your slide. But chlorine likes one bond and three lone pairs. So you see how the lone pairs increase? They go 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. And then the bonding, the number of bonds, go 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. And then hydrogen, you also have to have hydrogen in there. Hydrogen likes one bond, zero lone pair. And this will make it easy when you start putting molecules together. For example, um, and we'll start working your organic molecules, but um, you take something like HCN, okay? So carbon's the central atom, carbon will Typically, always be your central atom. You're in organic chemistry. Okay, carbon likes four bonds. So it's going to have four bonds. So you just go ahead and draw four. Okay. Um, you can draw four. You don't necessarily have to draw it like that. So let's just erase that there. Okay, so just keep in mind, hydrogen likes one bond. So we'll draw hydrogen here. There's your one bond. And nitrogen has to also be connected. And how many bonds does nitrogen? Nitrogen has three bonds and one lone pair. And carbon, four bonds. One, two, three, four, zero lone pairs. Hydrogen, one bond, zero lone pairs. Now, let's total up our total valence electrons. Hydrogen's group one. Carbon's group four. Nitrogen's group five. So what is that? Ten valence electrons. Let's see if we have ten. One, two, 
3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So we use 10 valence electrons. You always want to check this. And then you say hydrogen has 2, so that completes its octet. Carbon has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It has a complete octet. Nitrogen has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It has a complete octet. So each of these elements have to have their complete octet. You can only use those total valence electrons. You do your connectivity, but this bonding pattern makes things a lot simpler. Um, another example, CH3, CH, NH. I'm getting these from your book, okay? So the nice thing is these are connected. You go from left to right. Carbon, so we have this carbon, and then we have this carbon, and then we have this nitrogen, okay? Hydrogen's never going to be um, in between. Okay, car hydrogen's always a terminal. Same thing with your halogens. So you connect your carbon to your carbon to your nitrogen, like a choo-choo train. Okay, and then you have three hydrogens. So put the three hydrogens on the green carbon. Put the one hydrogen on the blue, because whatever hydrogens come after that goes to here. And then this hydrogen goes on to the nitrogen. Okay, now let's make sure we have our complete bonding pattern. Hydrogens go with one, and hydrogen has one. One bond and zero lone pairs. Carbon needs four. We got one, two, three, four. This carbon has one, two, three. So let's make it a double bond here. One, two, three, four. This nitrogen now has one, two, three. And we need to give it a lone pair because nitrogen likes three bonds and one lone pair. So we'll put our lone pair there. Now let's count up our total valence electrons here. Okay, we have two carbons, so that's two times four is eight. We have one nitrogen, so that's a five. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and then we have how many hydrogens? Three, four, five. So add five there, five, six, seven, eight. 18. Let's see if we have 18. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. 18. And then you can see that each one of those have a complete octet. And so that's how you draw the Lewis structures of organic chemistry. Okay, we will now go on to working our pogol activity if we were in class this is what we would be doing so um, let's go to page nine and we'll work the class activity and I want you to draw organic structures so you see the first model you have um, we'll just look at one you have your molecular formula and it's C3H7Br and then you have Lewis and the Lewis you have carbon 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 and then you have condensed and you need to be able to go from all of these you need to be able to do this for your first quiz condensed you go from left to right, so we start here, CH3, I always go from, I draw out my Lewis first, this is very important to draw Lewis structures correctly, and then from the Lewis you can go to condense, you start here, CH3, and then you go to the next one, which is CHBR, so everything that is attached to that carbon is written afterwards. And then you go to this one, so you'd write C, and then these three hydrogens are connected to that carbon, so it's CH3. And that's how you do the condensed. And then another one that's going to be very important that we'll end up doing all the time is the line angle, which is the skeletal drawing. And this is like this. So in um, skeletal driving, we have each one of these points is a carbon, one, two, three. So this would be your green carbon, and this would be your 
yellow carbon, and then the Br is coming off of your second carbon here. So it comes off of that. All right, so now it asks you to consider, now we ask the questions. Consider the Lewis structure in model one. What is the molecular formula? Okay, so that would be C3H7Br. In the Lewis structure on line one is every atom in the formula represented. Okay, so now we're talking the Lewis structure. And do you see that each hydrogen is there and bromine and carbon? So the answer is yes. Every atom in the formula is represented. Let's say go, go to the next page. In the Lewis structure, how many bonding electrons are represented? Okay, so then you count your bonding. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, so the answer is 20 bonding electrons. And sometimes you'll get questions like how many single bonds are there, how many non-bonding electrons are there in your quizzes. How many non-bonding electrons? Do you see any lone pairs? So zero non-bonding electrons. But is that true? Okay, so if I go back and look, I didn't draw mine like they did, right? So bromine has one, two, three, four, five, six. So this would be six, one, two, three, six non-bonding electrons. So in the Lewis structure, you should show all your bonding electrons and non-bonding electrons. And that is a true Lewis structure. For the remaining three lines in model one, compare the formulas to the Lewis structures. Discuss in your group um, if they're consistent with these remaining structures. So this is where they want you to look at entries 2, 3, and 4 of model 1 and you decide if all of the um, formulas are there, all the non-bonding elect, uh, electrons with the lines, covalent bonds, and the lone pairs. You see that in the Lewis structure? So the answer is yes, it is consistent. All right, so then you go to problem number two. And problem number two, we're looking at the condensed formula. So we're now we're looking at condensed formula. And the condensed structure is every atom from the formula represented. Yes, so we, we still have three carbons, one, two, three, seven hydrogens, and one bromine. So yes, every atom is represented. In the condensed structure, how many bonding electrons are represented? And zero, zero bonding electrons. So this is a difference between a condensed formula and a Lewis formula. How many non-bonding? Zero non-bonding in the condensed formula. In the condensed structure, all bonds to every atom shown? Yes. Um, in the condensed structures, well, I don't know. You could say no. I mean, you're not showing the bonds. Um, but every atom is there. In the condensed structures, you have to read from left to right which atom appears on the left. Okay, so the carbon is always the first on the left, and then what follows it, like the three hydrogens, are on the right. So which atom always follows the atom on the left? And it's whatever is bonded to that carbon. So whatever is bonded to that carbon, to the carbon on the left. Okay, what atoms can be drawn above or below the line in the condensed structure? Um, 
Okay, so there's pretty much that. I'm not sure exactly what that's asking. In entry four, the table one, in model one, how is the five-membered ring represented for the condensed structure? Okay, so we're talking about the C8H14. Okay, so do you see how you have your... I'm just going to do the skeletal there, okay? So the way it's done here is this is... C5H9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then all the hydrogens are here. Carbon likes four bonds, so when carbon is bonded to two carbons, one, two, the other two are hydrogens. So if you do this, this is C5H9, and then you come to this carbon here, this is a CH2, since this carbon already has one, two, three bonds, what's not shown is a hydrogen here. This carbon has one, two, so it has two hydrogens not shown. So that's CH2, CH, CH2. That's the condensed formula. C9, C5H9, CH2, CH, CH2. That's the condensed formula. And this is for um, number four on that model. Okay, so based on the above answers, summarize how condensed structures differ from Lewis structures. So how would you say they differ? Well, Lewis structures show all of the bonding of bonds and the non-bonding electrons. A condensed formula just shows the atoms and their connectivity from left to right. Um, so can you formulate a plan for converting Lewis structures to condensed structures? So to convert Lewis structures to condensed structures, I would just start with the left and then write the carbon and then say what, what four things are attached. So CH3, and then you go here to the next carbon and you say what are attached? Hydrogen and bromine. And then you go to the next carbon and you say what are attached? And it's those three. And you just work left to right. All right, H. Convert the following Lewis structure to a condensed structure. Your turn. Okay, so if we start from the left and we say, okay, there's carbon and it has three hydrogens, so CH3. Then we go to the next carbon and it has two hydrogens, CH2. Then we go to the next, that carbon has two hydrogens, CH2. Then we go to the next, that carbon has two hydrogens, CH2. And then you go to oxygen and then you go to carbon, so you just following along and then that has three hydrogens so CH3 so hopefully this is the uh, condensed formula that you have now we're going to look at the line angle skeleton drawing so we're on page 11 number three okay in model one in the line angle structure is every atom represented Okay, so let's rewrite this. We'll do the Lewis structure here. We had CH3, CH, BR, CH3. Then we had our condensed formula, CH3, CH, BR, CH3, and then our line angle drawing. And I like to put dots here like that to represent those carbons. So is every atom represented? No. What's missing? Hydrogens are not shown. Okay. 
Okay. How are bonding electrons represented? They're just lines. How are non-bonding electrons represented? Um, they can be shown or not shown. Sometimes, and I'll probably want you to show them. So you can show them like that because that'll be important. In the line angle structure, are all bonds to every atom shown? No, hydrogen's not shown. Which atoms are not shown? How are carbon atoms represented in the line angle structure? They're just the points. Okay, so for 3E, they're like the points or where the lines meet. How are heteroatoms other than carbon and hydrogen depicted? Heteroatoms are like oxygen and nitrogen and halogens, like bromine. And um, they are shown. And you should put the, the lone pairs. That'll be kind of important. Okay, so for each entry in the table, count the number of carbons in the Lewis structure and compare the condensed and line structures. Check that the number of carbons in each structure are the same as a molecular. You should always count your carbons, and that's going to be so important in here. So get used to counting carbons. Count carbons. So in entry number one, you have three carbons. Do you see you have one, two, three, three carbons? in your line angle skeleton. Okay, what about entry number two, C4, H10, oxygen. One, two, three, four, and then OH. You do put your hydrogens if it's on a heteroatom. So hydrogens are shown if it's a heteroatom. And then you put your lone pairs. I think you should. So we got four carbons. One, two, three, four. Okay, the next one. Tree number three, C3H6O. Okay, so this is C3, one, two, three. C3H6O. Oh, that's the same one. All right, and the next one, C8H14. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you can also fill in your hydrogens. If this carbon is bonded to two, it has hyd two hydrogens. This carbon is bonded to two, so it gets two hydrogens. This carbon likes four bonds and no lone pairs. One, two, three, so that only gets one hydrogen. This one, one, two. This one, one. This is two, okay? And so this is getting into like a mixed Lewis structure. And sometimes you're going to see them like that too as well. So you need to be able to know what your molecular formula would be. Okay, so now we're on 3H on page 11. Once your group agreed to the above questions, formulate a plan for converting Lewis structures to line angle structures. So basically... You just, you always should go from the Lewis structure. The Lewis structure is your problem solving. So in organic chemistry, the most important way to solve your problems is to draw the Lewis structure. In general chemistry, you usually had to write a balanced equation. And then you can do dimensional analysis from the coefficients. But in organic chemistry, you want to start with that Lewis structure and then go from there. So let's do an example of I. So it gives you the Lewis structure and it wants you to convert it to the line drawing. Also wants you to convert it to a condensed and a molecular formula because that's what you're going to have to do in your additional problems. So molecular formula, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, C5, H, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 1 oxygen. Um, condensed formula, you just start from the left here. CH3, CH2, CH2, 
CH2, oxygen, CH3. So there's your condensed formula. This is your Lewis structure. Now for your line, one, and you see the green, two, the blue, three, the yellow, four, oxygen's in the ring. There you go. I count your carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Five. How many hydrogens? Well, the first one, it has one line, so it has three hydrogens. The green has two because it has two lines. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then one oxygen. And I think it's good for you to put your lone pairs in because it's going to help you solve problems. That's how you convert from a Lewis structure to a um, line. Okay, so it looks like we're at additional problems on page 13. I am also want you to um, do the class activity. So for, I'm going to give you a plus one bonus point on your homework. Okay, I'm very harsh on grading your Pogel problems. Um, when I see lines that are drawn incorrectly or you miss drawn lone pairs, things that I've told you that I want to see, I'm at minus a half a point. And I've had people turn in a five point assignment and only get one point. Okay, and they've turned in four pages long. Um, I feel like that this is low stakes and it's very important to learn how to draw these and you're in organic one and I want you to learn before you go to organic two because if you don't learn it now you don't pick it up later so this is a very important time to take your time and to put a hundred percent into drawing these molecules so I want for a one point bonus I want you to draw the missing structures on page 12 and then um, you can work the additional problems on page 13, 14, and 15. And then we'll work on our next learning objective, which will be um, electronegativity, formal charges, and resonance structures.